Hey, what's up, fam? Thank y'all for tuning in once again. And as always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. Man, this is a sad story. Sad, sad story. This is on NBCnews.com. And I mean, imagine your child leaving the house. You don't hear from them again. You go to the police every day, every week, trying to get updates on the store, on the missing person store, only to find out that your child was deleted, lost his life a few hours after you've seen him, not even a few hours, maybe a few minutes after you saw him last and has been buried in an unmarked grave for weeks, maybe months. And you had no idea. And the, and the very people that you were calling, trying to get information from, already knew this. Well, anyway, that's the story we're going to get into today. Um, like I say, this is on NBCnews.com, and it reads, a mother reported her son missing in March. Police kept the truth from her for months. The lady name is... Uh, and better than Wade searches no search for her adult son ended when she discovered that an officer had run him over and without telling her authorities buried him in a pauper's field now like i said this is a sad story but we're going to get into all kind of angles right quick we're going to get into the police the police's involvement in this the accountability of the we'll say the victim and maybe even his parents and the surrounding environment. And also going to get into maybe a conspiracy theory or two. So let's get into it. So we're going to kind of skim through this, scroll through this, read through this a little bit and get my take on it. It says seven months of searching for her lost son. Seven months. This woman searched, was looking for her son. Brought Betterston Way to a dirt road leading to leading into the woods, past an empty horse stable and a scrapyard. The last time she seen her middle child, Dexter Wade, 37, was on the night of March 5th as he left home with a friend. She reported him missing, and Jackson Police told her they'd been unable to find him, she said. It wasn't until 172 excruciating days after his disappearance that Betterston learned the truth. Dexter had been killed less than an hour after he left home. Struck by a Jackson police car as, as he crossed a nearby interstate highway. Police had known Dexter's name and hers, but failed to contact her instead of letting his body go unclaimed for months in the county morgue. Okay, a lot to unpack there. One, he uh got hit by crossing the interstate. Well, that right there lets you know that whoever hit him would not be found, you know, at fault. We found guilty or get charges pressed against them, unless they was intoxicated. For you know, but other than that, because crossing that highway, man, I've seen many stories where people try to cross the highway and got hit and killed. And it's crazy because I remember one day, I, I it was a busy road. Can't remember where I was at, but I said I was gonna try to cross the street. I looked down. And it was an eye-opening, you know, moment. You know, I looked, you know, looking both ways, look down, get ready to cross. I look and I see a car. I see a car down the road, right? Down the road. So I'm like, okay, I think I can make that. By the time I got ready to step on that pavement and looked again, that car was so close. I was like, damn. So I backed up. I said, oh no. So I ended up just going down to the crosswalk. And it was like a like like like, like a multi-lane street. But the car probably going 60, 70 miles now. So you can imagine a car going, you know, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour on a highway. You're gonna you're gonna flow of traffic. Police or not police, off duty, whatever. <clears throat> like I said, you're going about 70 miles an hour, give or take. Those cars are going a lot faster than you think they are going. You might think you can run across that sh that highway and, and not get hit, but one shoot man like i said them cars are going too fast and then if it's at night it's probably dark they can't see you by the time they see you it's too late how many people you know then hit deer you know what i'm saying hit cows on, on the highway i know we do it down here in the south so anyway 
Uh, so struck by the police known Dexter to say, but feel the contact that another golden claim for months. Now it was early October and Betterson had finally been told where, where she could find her son. She pulled up the gates of the Hines County penal farm, which, you know, prison, prison farm. Her sister in the passenger seat, the sheriff's deputy and two jumpsuited inmates in a pickup told her to follow him. Now, my question is, why would they bury him in a penal farm? Of all places, I guess that's the, the status quo that is someone's body is not clean. That's where they bury them. But you know, a funny thing is it brings me to another story that I just read about, I think it said here in the state of Texas, that if someone dies and the family is unable to like claim the body, unable to bury it for financial reasons, and they eventually have to give the body over to the state. So the state has the, you know, can do whatever they want to with it. So a lot of these bodies are going to scientific research, like high schools, cadavers, where kids, you know, dissect, look at organs, look at tissues and stuff like that. And then once they are finished being used, the, 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 the parts of the body parts, or whatever, gather back up, taken back down to, I guess, give them back to the state or the county or who, and they cremate the body and then they could eventually give the, the body back to the family. And, but if, or if the body's unclaimed, same thing, you know, if the body's unclaimed, same thing, go through that whole process, get cremated, and then you may get buried, may get ashes, may get scattered, or just may get dusted into the, you know, dusted into the trash can and go about your business. So, when you see the story of these bodies not being found, people looking for their loved ones and can't find them, you know, and then you read, you look at some stories where people find bodies, but they can't, they say there's no missing person report. So they don't know who the person belonged to, if they're, if they have family or not, eventually those bodies have to be disposed of just for health reasons and space storage reasons and financial reasons. So keep that in mind. So keep that in mind, but I said he got buried in a prison uh, 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 grave site. And I'm wondering, is it because he has a prison record? And we'll get into that in a minute. So they bounced down the road and curved into the woods, crawling past clearing where rows of small signs jutted from the earth, each marked with a number. Girl, look at this, uh, Betterston 65 said to her sister, would you believe they would bury someone out here? Yes, I do. <laughs> The caravan came to the end of the road another, at another clearing with more markers. The deputy took one of Barris's hands, the daughter took the other, and they walked to the mounds of loosely packed dirt. They stopped at grave number 672. Really? Barrison said, you can tell she's probably distraught. Just by reading this, you know she's about to go. She's about to go through it. She bent over, hands on her knees. She cried out, her voice echoing off the, off the surrounding trees. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Growing up in Jackson, Dexter was a quote, sweet little boy, sharp with computers and, and a leader among classmates, lover of nice clothes, a dreamer who hoped one day to run his own business, refurbishing cars. That went awry when in his teens, he when he got lost under the influence of older men who stole cars and did drugs. So this is the environment part. One, it says he liked nice clothes, which meant that he was a dresser, which meant he liked style, fashion, name, brand. Like to dress up, be seen, big shot, right? Which means that stuff costs money. Mom, she got three kids, single parent for whatever reason, which is why, you know, we try to harp so much on Family sticking together, staying together for the sake of the children. If not, nothing that's not for our own personal selfish needs, because we've all made those choices, you know, and some of us panned out okay, but others not so well. So you got to be careful about the choice of people you have children with. That's why, you know, long term relationships are always great. Real courting, not Cheesecake Factory hating courting, but real courting, where you get to know somebody over time, get to know their personality, get to know their family, what they like, and then you, you know you get to courting a young lady, things of that nature. 
grow with each other, build a family, and become and grow and, and create kids that are uh, productive members of society. Like I said, a lot of us have made selfish choices, not even, you know, not thinking too much about the children, but thinking about our own happiness and how unfair the world is. But when you make choices, you have to deal with them, right? So, like I say, she got three kids, single parent. She says in the story she was working, so she wasn't really there for her son. And so he get caught up like a lot of our teenage boys do. They get caught up in the streets. They get caught up with the glamour, the, you know, the adrenaline, the excitement of getting out there and doing something bad or something that men do or something, you know, masculine, whether that's uh, the correct way to look at it. I mean, it's, it's just, that's just what it is. And so that's what happened. He get, he get caught up in his environment, an environment that like the examples in the situation I just said, that probably most of the people in his community went through, was going through. So only thing they knew is steal cars, get money, steal cars, do drugs, you know, to escape from the pain and poverty and try to get money for by whatever means, easy money. And that's what and that's what he uh decided to do. It says single mother of three mother of three who worked at night. Ber uh, Betterston said she wasn't always around for Dexter, but she always bailed him out of jail, which I feel is problem number one. And it's easy for me to say because I haven't had no kids to bail out of jail. But when you look at society and you look at examples of, of how it pans out, I can understand as a parent, you want to get your kids, get your kids out of so-called trouble. You want to help them thinking that if you come and bail them out, they're gonna do better. When most of the time, all it does is allow them to go back and do the same thing. And this is for children and all of even, you know, so even adults. But adults had to get that belief that they can get that mama bail them out from when they kids and do something bad. And you know, your mama go to school and say, my kid would never do nothing like that. You got my kid messed up. You remember talking about somebody else's kid. You talk, you, touch my kid, it's gonna be a problem. Don't talk to my kid crazy. My kid ain't bad, blah, blah, blah. I got a good kid. You know, he makes good grades. He's smart. He wanna own a business. He like nice clothes. Kids see that, they're like, well, shoot, I can do whatever I want to because mama say what I'm doing is good, so I can just keep it up. And then she gonna bail me out. When well, you do that as a kid, you become a 37 year old man and you still bailing him out of jail. Eventually you gotta say, you gotta let a man be a man, let an adult be an adult and let them, you know, deal with their own stuff. Handle their own business. They get themselves into problems, get them out. They gotta get their own self out. He say, she, but she always bailed him out of jail and he always returned home. So he's 37 years old, in and out of prison, ain't got his own place. So he's living with his mom because he's been in and out of prison. I mean, his life is pretty much his life has been pretty much set, which is and it, which is a sad thing. They say, although his boyhood aspiration didn't come true, he and a girlfriend, Candace Thomas, had two daughters who remained a bright spot for him, even after the couple's romantic relationship dissolved, even after Dexter served two stints in prison, one for attempted auto theft and the other for armed robbery. According to Mississippi Department of Corrections, he was released in 2017. Again, Miss Candace. <laughs> You chose a dude who was a criminal. But a lot of these girls, they, they like, a lot of these women too, they like the bad boy. They like the guy who's out there selling drugs, who out there making that quick money, who living that dangerous life. It look like he just a super, superhero, super villain that's gonna protect her. That'll be there for that, do anything to provide for. Not understanding, this is not the guy to 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 build a future with because his future is going to be most likely cut short because of the lifestyle that he led and led and she probably i'm sure she was if you ask her she probably was frustrated throughout the relationship probably why they broke up you can say in and out of prison uh they got a picture here of him with his daughters and they look young like maybe two three maybe five or six this is 2016 
Uh, so they're at least, so his kids are probably at least 10 years old and stuff now. And, you know, daddy is, you know, 2016, I guess he was in jail. They took a picture. And that's another thing. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing. That's how that cycle continues. Is, you know, you take your kids to visit you in jail. But that's another story. Let's, 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 let's stay on topic. Say so when he got out, he remained free with Thomas. No, kept remained friends with Thomas and was a committed father. Although Thomas had full legal custody, Dexter talked to his daughters often and visited them in Gulfport, three hours away. During the summers, they came to stay with him at Burstein's home in Jackson. So again, <clears throat> in and out of prison, probably can't get you no know, can't get a job, convicted felon. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's it's a it's a sad. It's a sad story. Say like sweet loving when it came to his kids. I'm sure he loved his babies. He just couldn't get right. He said, but prison had clearly damaged him. You could look in his eyes and see he wasn't the same person. I could tell he was struggling mentally. I bet he was. They said he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. After starting medication, he decreased his illegal drug intake and stayed home most of the day cleaning and taking care of the yard. And and like to give homemade ice pops to kids and their on their uh, street. I remember a guy, he was back in the day, uh, I would say mid-level, you know what I'm saying? Drug dealer made a lot of money, okay? But was in and out of prison, did a long stint one time and got out. Uh, when he got out, you know, so a lot of us didn't know he was out until we get a call and they said he was in the, he was in the hospital pretty much brain dead, been in an accident, got thrown out the car, you know, need to go see him before they pull the plug on him. Okay. Kind of find out he had been out for months. Kind of find out that they was even investigating him for robbing banks. Kind of find out he wasn't working, but you know what he did? He did a lot of work around the house. From what I heard, morning yards, mowing yards for neighbors and stuff like that. Nice guy, everything, but just could not get, a, get in that prison. That's one thing they don't tell you. When you get in that prison, not that prison, man, mentally, it it it, it robs you. It destroys you. Because what are you going to do when you get out? Because you can't get a job. You can't really function. It wasn't like they really re rehabilitated you while you was in there. So, they lock your cage up like an animal, like a monster. And then, but if you so, you know, then they let you out. But if you're so bad, why not just leave you in there? You know what I'm saying? If you're not, if they can't rehabilitate you, why do they take you out? I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, make it make sense. Don't nobody need to be caged up like that. But while they're in there, they should be, like I say, rehabilitated, learn a trade, go to school, learn how to function in society and then try it. But the prisons don't do that. So they let these guys out. You know what I'm saying? You put them in a glad area system for years and you let them out and they don't know how to act. They say he didn't seem like he was in a bad place, but I don't know what happened that particular day. So basically, I'm not gonna read this whole article. So basically what the article says is, they got into it about a broken window one night. So he left about seven something. And she didn't hear from him. She called, uh, the phone, uh, I don't know if he had a phone, but called like family friends, called the police. Even her mom was like saying, don't call the police because they ain't gonna do nothing. She was like, she didn't really, she, she had to think about it for a minute, but then she eventually called the police. Game report, dude missing. Okay, done deal. Time goes on, she keeps asking for information. No one has any information. Well, all the while, what happened is, like I said before, he tried to run across the street, got hit by off-duty police officer. They said off-duty police wasn't intoxicated, wasn't in need of bread, under influence, anything. But they did mention saying that, I don't see if I can find it real quick. Uh, it said that he, they found that he had substances. Well, when they found him, that he didn't have any ID, but he had a prescription bottle with his name and address and number. So, <clears throat> The police say they say they tried to call his mom and left a message and she didn't call back. She said she don't remember that phone call, which is kind of interesting. But here's the thing. It said, like I said, it said he had, oh, 
There we go. Let's say a toxicology report later noted that Dexter had PCP and methamphetamine in his system. So here's my conspiracy theory. You got a young brother who is a convicted fella, known drug user, and you know, and has a history of drug abuse. But they say he's schizophrenia and bipolar. So then they prescribe him medications. Now we know all these medications out here in this world, they have uh, they have side effects, right? So here's the thing: if he is on bipolar and schizo medicine, how come in this story the only two drugs that they found in his system is PCP and methamphetamine? Could it be possible that the Drugs that he was prescribed, the pills that was in that bottle, were not the prescription that they claimed they was giving him. I'm, I'm just asking. Like, could it be just like a setup? Because I'm the type of dude, I don't put nothing past nobody, not your friend, not your neighbor, not your family, not your government, not your police, not your law enforcement, none of it. Not your school system. Not your job. I don't put... I don't put conspiracies or things past anybody. So this brother could have been taking medication that he that he thought because his mom said he you no know, pretty much damn near slowed down to stop using illegal drugs and was using the medication that they gave him. So the medication so that's all I'm asking is the medication that they prescribed him could have been PCP and methamphetamine he just didn't know. Remember Prince, when he died, when they found him slumped over in, in, the, in, the, in the elevator, said he had fentanyl. Now, they said Prince was taking painkillers, that he wasn't a drug user, wasn't a drug abuser, didn't know what I'm saying, couldn't, didn't, didn't, wouldn't take him, was surprised, people were surprised that he was taking pain pills, but he had messed his back up. So they put him on pain prescriptions. When he, when they found him, and that's the thing. When you got somebody who's like not who's not used to doing stuff like that, and you put them on something that strong, that powerful, they can become addicted and not even know it, like, like for real. But and he's older too. So it's probably even worse. But let's say he died of fentanyl overdose. It's like, where the hell did he get the fentanyl? And then they try to, you know, uh look at these doctors and the doctor's son and prosecuting them and what I don't know what happened to that case. But could have been, they said maybe the medication got mixed wrong. And that could be why he OD'd on quote unquote fentanyl. I mean, you never know. James Brown said the same thing. Didn't do drugs, didn't do alcohol, but for some reason, well, I know that one interview, man, he's looked throw it out. But again, maybe he was taking something and didn't know what it was. You just don't know. But then when people get on stuff, they, by the time they figure out what's going on, it's too late. And you know, um, when you're on the outside looking in, you can tell what's going on with them, but they can't tell. So that's all I'm saying. I don't want. I don't want to go too long on this, but could it, I'm just saying, could it, it's 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 a possibility. <clears throat> now why would now why would they do that? You ask to put his butt back in prison because he's 37. He's still kind of viable. They know he can't do nothing out in society. They're gonna do is just rob people, continue you know to, to, to steal and do criminal activity and be and do drugs she's still 30s he still got some physical ability left let's get him back in the jail which is probably how he got hit by the police he might have been running from the police huh i'm just saying he might was running from her because they asked him because the question the mom was asking like how did he get from her house to that highway and getting hit on that highway in that little time because the distance doesn't make sense. Now, she said he left with a friend, so I guess they left walking. But somehow he got to the highway in a short amount of time, and she said they don't live that damn close to the highway. So he had to have got a ride there. Could have been by the same police officer that hit him. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, because this is my thing. And this is one thing I want a lot of people to realize when it comes to life. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to end it. I'm going to put this in the description so y'all can read this story yourself. It is sad. It is sad, but you can get caught up in the system and so many things that could happen. And, you know, people say sometimes it's just as simple 
as trying to run across the street and police hit him. Could be that simple, boy. It could be, or it could be a lot more. The thing about life is you have to understand root causes of problems in order to correct them. <clears throat> now I said the brother's 37 living with his mama. <clears throat> it's sad that he's here no longer. But instead of just, just harping on what happened, you always gotta go, you, and there's something you learn in nursing school, like critical thinking. You always ask questions, you go backwards until you figure out what the root cause were, uh, was of the problem as a whole. So that way we can try to fix it and try to keep it from happening to somebody else. Cause the story could have been just, hey, Find the police ran over my son. You know, they hid it, case closed. <clears throat> and then you got Al Sharpton and everybody else, Ben, Ben, what's his name? Ben Crump, uh, protesting, suing, you know, trying, you know, saying this wasn't right because he was black. That's why they did it. Oh, yeah. She also said she thinks she put a lawsuit against the police because her brother got, 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 got uh, deleted. He got slammed on the ground by a policeman. He was like 62, I think. I slammed on the ground by a policeman and died. So she had a complaint and a lawsuit or something against the police. So she also think that might have, have maybe a reason why they couldn't get, get in contact, why they didn't get in contact with her. They kept giving her the runaround because the policeman said that they contact, tried to contact us. They couldn't get a hold of her. And, and they also think they turned the investigation over to some other department because that was their jurisdiction. But she kept calling and all she was getting was no new information, no new information, no new information. And then until somehow some woman <clears throat> took over the case. And that's the cool thing about it. You got a mother who understands a mother's pain. So I don't know if she's a mother, but I know she's a woman. So that woman got a hold of that case and was like, and I'm quite sure that that mother, motherly instinct, the intuition, that nurturing thing, you know what I'm saying, came out of. It healed her and she was like, let me look into this. And she looked into it and that's how the son was found. But again, like I said, you can read this. What I'm saying is, like I said, <clears throat> you gotta understand root causes. So let's, like for example, for example, let's say, <clears throat> man, what am I trying to say? Let me see, let me see. For example, let's say like somebody, uh, car break. No, I'm saying somebody has car breaks down and you have no way of getting around. So you got to rely on rides from other people. And you rely, you rely on rides from other people, people who got cars, people who work, you know, or whatever. So now you're relying on them to go out their way to help you. And you almost act entitled like they're supposed to do it. But anyway, when they say, no, they're not going to take you here to the store or no, they're not going to go out. Yeah. Go out their way to take you over here real quick. Drop you off over here. Or can you, can you come take me to pick something up? No. And they're like, look, no, what you're going to have to do is work around my schedule. You're going to have to, you're going to have to, yeah, work around my schedule on this day. I'm free. We can go I take you to the store. You can get all the groceries you want. Come back. You cool for two weeks. Uh, you need a ride to work. I'll take you to work if it's on my way to work or if I'm on my way doing something. I'm not going to take you to work, pick you up all the time. Figure it out. Walk. Ride the bus. Get a bike. <clears throat> Go get a moped. Hell, live at work. So you can, you know, find up somewhere to sleep at work so you can make all the money you want. Work overtime so you, so you can stay there. Whatever the case may be. But do what you got to do to, you know, to, <clears throat> to get where you need to get to. So then you start acting like, like getting mad because the person said they're not going to wait on you hand and foot. But it's like, I don't owe you anything. So the question is, well, why you up here getting pissed off? Let's see. Let's, 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 let's get down to the real. Why are we here in the first place? How'd your car break down? Did, were you driving it? More than what you should should have been when you drive, you know, you know it's an old car, it's a regular car, barely making it. Are you trying to drive to Florida or 
or you know, or, or, or I don't know, California, whatever, going on a vacation, going to Mexico, and you know damn well your car probably ain't gonna make it because you ain't like you did no tune up, you ain't like you got no oil change. When last time you check your oil? When last time you check your tires? When last time you didn't ask to borrow money for gas? Stuff like that. And you, but what my point is, is you go to, okay, how'd the car break down? Why you don't have no money? You know what I'm saying? What happened to the jobs? Blah, 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 blah. And you, and you take it there and you go all the way back and we say, okay, well, the reason why, the real reason why you kidding rides for me is not because your car broke down, but it's because of the choices you made, which cause this car to break down. Now it'd be different if, if you was doing the right thing, going to work, paying your bills, trying to stack your money, kicking it for every now and then, but you know, you was on your P's and Q's, taking care of your family, bam, and then something happened. Okay, I can understand it. So where you at? You know, well, I got this much money, so I didn't take my car to the shop. Cause if you, you know what I'm saying? If you was doing what you were supposed to be doing, you probably had enough money to take your car to the shop. Yeah, we can drop your car to the shop and let's see. What's it gonna cost to fix it? You see what I'm saying? But if you're not taking care of your business and you plan around and just, you know, saying whatever, because I do whatever I need to do, because even if I mess up like brother here, I got somebody that'll bail me out. You're going to continue to make the wrong choices, but then one day you're going to make a choice that you're going to truly regret and it's truly going to affect you. But the point is, you get back to the root cause of why we are here in the first place. Once you're able to do that, then it's easier to learn from those mistakes. So in the future, you don't make them again. It's like, well, heck, my car broke down or this happened because I don't know, I spent too much money. I know I spent, I spent way more money than I had. So that's why I had no money to fix my car. So, okay, so next time what I'm going to do is stop spending money on new ports. Stop, you know, stop going, you know, going to the weed, man. Stop overspending, you know, buying silly crap at, you know, at the high ass gas stations or, you know, convenience stores. Just so I just go to the grocery store, you know, use coupons, use sales ads, sales ads, stuff like that. Try to save as much money as I can. Eat in, don't go out all the time so I can save money because a rainy day is gonna come and I need to be prepared for it for when it happens. That's all. So in this story, it's like, it goes all the way back to, like I said, the environment, the, the mom with, you know, single mom with three kids, gotta work, that's hard. I ain't saying, you know, I ain't dogging or knocking it down because if we all make choices and the the key is to learn from them and to build from it and try to, there are, and I'm just going to say this, there are resources out there for people in situations like this. And the problem is a lot of us don't know about them a lot, of, but, but, but it's easier to find them now but with the internet, it's, you know, and, and, and yeah, with the internet, social media, all that stuff, you can search for Thing for, for programs for single mothers or for kids who, you know, you know programs that kids can get into while mom is at work, mentoring, uh, what's that, 100 black men uh, organizations that help mentor young, young boys, stuff like that. And it may not be something close to your house, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's funny how people say, you tell them, hey, Take your kids to the YMCA. Oh, well, the YMCA is like 10 miles from the house. That's that's out the way. Or take, you know, Salvation Army or somewhere. And they're like, oh, that's out the way. I don't know if I can't take them all the time. But you'll go to State Fair, Texas, which is out, way out the way. You'll go to a concert, which will be on the other side of town. You go to a, a party, you go to a, a bender event, you go to a football game, you go to a sporting event. Hell, you go out of town with your homegirls, which is way out the way and costs way more money than to do something for your cheer on a daily basis. Something to invest in them so that they can have 
a better opportunity, a solid mind to grow and to be productive members of society. So it's about choices. So again, you try to find the root cause of the problem. And then when things happen, because everything's going to happen, and the first thing you want to holler is, woe is me. Ain't no woe is me. Not when you have the opportunities. Now, if you don't have the opportunities, I understand. Like I said, I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking anybody at all. Cause like I said, we've all made those choices that we look back on and say, man, if I would have done something different, I, I, I would have, I would have did something different. But then you got people that say, oh, I wouldn't have changed anything because it made the person, made me the person I am. Man, bull corn. Bull corn. If I could have had it easy, no, if I if I could have took a, a simple, I won't say easy, because easy kind of makes you sorry. But if I could have took a simpler route to work hard and get everything done, sure. I, I, I go back and do it. I change it all. Because some things I shoot didn't want to go through. Cause some things I went through, you know what I'm saying? Uh yeah, some things I went through, other people might have went through and didn't make it. But I went through it and was blessed enough to make it to where I am now. So anyway, let me stop ranting. Y'all read this story. Like I say, it's sad. The police is jacked up. Conspiracy theory. Yeah, they probably uh kept it from they didn't care. That shows you right here, really, that they it, it and we holler, and they wonder why we holler racism and we bring race into everything. Well, it's because race is a part of a whole, almost every damn thing when it comes to this country. And when you see a story like this where a mother has been pleading for the, you know, to, to for the word, to know the whereabouts of her son, want the police to just act like they care. And it seemed like they didn't. And then they kind of find out. They the one who they the one who deleted him and buried him. I mean, yeah, you gotta say they don't care about black people. You just got to. It just show. That's just another way of showing, it, proving it. But anyway, tell me what you think about this story, y'all. Leave your comments below and then share it with the world. And with that being said, I leave you in peace, and I'll see. You.